Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a two-step cluster analysis in SPSS. In counseling research, we use the cluster analysis to allow us to group participants together based on variables that we specify in the analysis. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in data view, I have 120 participants and two independent variables, program and gender, and three dependent variables, depression, anxiety, and substance use. Let's assume that these three dependent variables are all recorded using a standard score, specifically a T-score, which has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And that lower scores represent reduced frequency, duration, and severity of symptoms, and higher scores represent increased frequency, duration, and severity of symptoms. So to get started with the cluster analysis, we'll first go to Analyze, then Classify, and we'll select Two-Step Cluster. And this is what the dialog will look like by default. The area of interest here would be the continuous variables, specifically the dependent variables, depression, anxiety and substance use. So I just hold down control and select those three and move them over. I'm making no change under options, but under output, I want to make sure I check off create cluster membership variable. So this will create a new variable that you can see in the data view and it'll identify which cluster a specific participant belongs to and then we'll click continue. And you can see for a number of clusters, you can have SPSS determine the number automatically and you can set a maximum and you can also specify a fixed number of clusters. By default, the maximum is 15. I'm just gonna leave it there and click okay. So at first, you can see the output you have this, uh, the two-step algorithm. You have three inputs and it found three clusters. We know that. And it gives you an idea of the cluster quality. And the cluster quality here would be good, but just barely. To access the rest of the output, uh, we're gonna double click on this and it's gonna open up what SPSS refers to as the model viewer. I'm gonna expand this out a little. So you can see SPSS identified three clusters. That was over here. And you can see on this pie chart as well. And the smallest cluster has 26 records and the largest 49. And that gives you the ratio of largest cluster to smallest cluster. In this case, the ratio is under two, which is what we're looking for. Although under three is often acceptable as well. Down here at the bottom left of this window with cluster sizes, you can select predictor importance, and you can see that substance use had the highest predictor importance, then depression, then anxiety. And then looking at the model summary, if we look at the bottom left, we can see that it's selected to model summary, we can select clusters and it'll actually provide us information on each of the clusters. You can see they're ordered here, two, three, one, because it's going by the number of records in each cluster. If you wanna order it one, two, three, you just go down to this button here, and now it, it reorders it one, two, three. So as you can see, cluster one has 26 records and two, has 49 and 345 and it'll give you the mean values of the different variables. So even at this level we can see a pattern which is the lower scores tend to cluster together and then kind of the mid-range scores tend to cluster together and then the higher scores and the largest group was those in kind of that middle range. 
So if we select the entire cluster by clicking up here at the top, we can see the cluster comparison comes up in the window on the right. And you can see that the median is provided for each of these variables. So we can see in cluster one, which we know is the cluster that has the lower scores, that the substance use and the depression move quite a bit in terms of, you know, to the left, they're, they're quite a bit lower, but anxiety doesn't move quite as far. If we look at cluster two, we can see they're all pretty much in that middle range, although substance use and depression a little lower than anxiety. And then in cluster three, Anxiety is a, a bit higher, depression is even higher than that, and then substance use is the highest. So if we're working with actual data here, we would recognize that anxiety appears to not move a lot as depression and substance use uh, moves quite a bit. So it's, it's less sensitive, uh, perhaps that would be a characteristic of the particular population sampled or measurement error or a combination of both. But either way, the anxiety dependent variable seems to be less sensitive to movement in the other two domains, substance use and depression. So again, if you look at these three, you see for one and three, substance use and depression are further left and right respectively. But of course in that middle cluster two, which is the largest, they're fairly close to the same. Another useful output is if you select one of these cells, for example the substance use in cluster one, it'll show you the cell distribution. So the overall is the pink in the background and then the red kind of in the foreground is the substance use cell distribution for cluster one. So you can see the cell distribution is to the left, to the lower range, and then for cluster two, kind of in the middle, and then cluster three toward the right. For depression, we can see a similar pattern. And then for anxiety, we can see in the, this is the uh, lower category, cluster one, the lower scores and cluster two and cluster three. So it's not as distinct with anxiety. So the, the lower cluster does seem to be a bit lower, but the cell distribution for anxiety for cluster two and for cluster three really don't seem to be as different from one another as you would see for depression and substance use between clusters two and three. So I'm going to minimize the model viewer and the output and I want to show you the variable that we created uh, in the dialog for a two-step cluster which identifies the cluster for each record. So we can see for ID 1001 this participant was in cluster one for two, they're in cluster two, for three, cluster one, and so on. It'll give you all the cluster numbers for each record. If you wanted to look at these records by cluster, you could sort, you could sort descending or ascending. In this case, I'll go with ascending. So cluster one, this cluster tends to represent scores that are a bit lower. So this would be where the frequency, duration, severity of the symptoms were a bit lower. And then you remember two is kind of that mid-range cluster and then cluster three uh, a higher frequency, duration, severity of symptoms. So by sorting you can get a look at the records divided up by cluster. I hope you found this video on two-step cluster analysis and SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.